Hello and welcome back to part two of the two-part video series for Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Stay tuned to learn more techniques on how to change how people think about you by adjusting your behavior towards them. Principle nine, show respect for the other person's opinions. Never say you're wrong. You cannot teach a man anything. You can only help him to find it within himself. If you tell someone they are wrong, you have dealt a blow to their intelligence, pride and self-respect. This will make them never want to change their minds. Even if you utilize the knowledge of Einstein to prove them wrong, their feelings will still be hurt. Trying to convince them after this is going to make it a great deal harder. Thus, why you should try to avoid it. That is why, when you prove something, don't let anybody know it. Do it suddenly, so that no one will feel that you are doing it. Thus, why you should try to be wiser than other people if you can, but do not tell them so. Once you stop telling people they are wrong, you will find that it pays. Principle 10. If you are wrong, admit it quickly and empathetically. By fighting, you never get enough, but by yielding, you get more than you expected. When we are right, we should try to win people gently and tactfully. However, when we are wrong, this is quite often at times, let's admit our mistakes quickly and with enthusiasm. We are human. Just as we do some stuff well, we eventually do other things wrong, and the mistakes are made to be learned from. It is important to understand that there is no shame in admitting this quickly and concisely, but battling out until we are proven defiantly wrong, this causes unwanted and needless problems. Unneeded problems are a headache for anyone, so why try to actively search for them? If we admit we are wrong, we have more time for other things. Principle 11, get the other person saying yes, yes, immediately. The skillful speaker gets, at the outset, a number of yes responses. When talking with people, don't begin by discussing the things on which you differ. Rather, begin by emphasizing and keep on emphasizing the things on which you both agree. This technique is very efficient in debates in particular. When debating someone, show the common ground you both share on the subject to show that you do not disagree with every single thing, so that they open up more to your ideas. Starting with, yes, I agree with your opinion on this in particular. However, from what I know and I think, when people start by saying yes, this automatically sets them in a position of approval and they become more open in their speech and eventually in listening to your ideas. However, if you start by disagreeing with them from the start, they will not be as open to considering your ideas or suggestions. Principle 12. Let the other person feel that the idea is theirs. Though you have more faith in ideas that you discover for yourself than in ideas that are handed to you on a silver platter, no one likes to feel like they are being sold something or told to do a thing. We like to think that we are buying things on our own accord and that we are acting upon our own ideas. When suggesting a plan or a sale to someone, make it feel like the other person came up with the idea on their own accord. This will make them feel more comfortable with the suggestion and more likely to embrace it, as they feel like the incentive is being taken by them. You can do this by actively asking them for their opinion on how to finish an unfinished project or ask them how they prefer something and tailor it specifically towards them. Principle 13. Try honestly to see things from the other's point of view. There is a reason why the other person thinks and acts the way they do. People very rarely do things for no particular reason at all. They will nearly always have one or even several reasons as to why they will do something. Try to honestly put yourself in the other person's shoes in order to see exactly why they choose to do it that way. This does not have to take as much time as you might think, as just a minute thinking from their point of view can completely change the situation and help you understand how to approach it. As cooperativeness in conversation is achieved, 
when you show that you consider the other person's ideas and feelings as important as your own. Try to guide the conversation in a way that shows you understand their thoughts and viewpoint, and this will encourage the listener to have an open mind to your ideas. Principle 14. Be sympathetic with the other person's ideas and desires. Three-fourths of the people you will ever meet are hungering and thirsting for sympathy. Give it to them, and they will love you. Dale Carnegie says, Suppose you had inherited the same body and mind that Al Capone had. Suppose you had his environment and experiences. You would then be precisely what he was, and where he was. For it is those things, and only those things, that made him the way he was. It is important to understand that some people have grown to be what they are due to the circumstances life has made them find themselves in. Comprehending this and answering a phrase such as, I don't blame you for feeling as you do. If I were you, I would undoubtedly feel just as you do. Saying something like this will instantly make the other person more sincere because if you were the other person, you would feel just as they do now and they know they are being understood on a personal level. Principle 15. Talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person's. It isn't nearly so difficult to listen to a recital of your own faults if the person criticizing begins by humbly admitting that they too are far from impeccable. If several sentences humbling oneself and praising the other party can turn someone into a closer acquaintance, imagine what humility and praise can do for you and me in our daily contacts. If used in a correct manner, the humility from admitting to your mistakes before criticizing others will work miracles in human relations by convincing the other party to change their behavior. Taking the example of parents that do not want their child to smoke when they themselves both smoke. By sincerely admitting they started around the same age as the child has and how the nicotine got the best of them and now gives them irritating coughing. Admitting this preemptively before telling their child what to do when they are not a good example can cause their child to be more open to considering not even starting. Principle 16. Use encouragement. Make the fault seem easy to correct. Make the thing seem easy to do. Let the other person know that you have faith in their ability to do it, that they have an undeveloped flair for it, and they will practice until the dawn comes in the window in order to excel at it. Telling someone that they are simply not good at a certain thing or that they do not have the gift for it will destroy almost any initiative to try to improve. If you really want someone to do something, make the fault seem okay and easy to improve upon. Getting started for a lot of people is already half the step. A little amount of encouragement will cause them to work hard and try to achieve the goal, as once they get started, continuing seems easier. Let's take an example. Take learning a new skill like learning an instrument or skating. Both of these may seem daunting initially, but with a bit of encouragement and the basics under control, you can achieve wonders after. From learning how to improvise and sight read on an instrument, to learning new tricks on the skateboard, having the encouragement to start and making the mistakes seem easy to correct will work wonders sooner or later. Thank you for staying to the end of the video and I hope it was useful and you took something away from it, even if it was one single technique. Make sure to subscribe to not miss out on future content and also make sure to comment down below if there's any techniques that you find useful or you can also comment down below a technique that you use on a daily basis. Once again, thank you and I'll see you next time.